Thank you. All right, first of all, thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here. When they gave me the name of the topic here, Going Into the Unknown, uh, I think what I'm gonna talk a little bit about today, I think is very appropriate for everybody sitting in this room. From the students, no matter what your year is, to the adults, teachers, uh, we're gonna talk about something called career management. Anybody have any idea what that means? Okay, you're gonna learn. Uh, the topic of my, of my presentation is where's your buffalo? But I'm gonna start with, how to turn it off. What is a headhunter? As I made my introduction, they said, Tom Johnson, I run my own executive search firm. Uh, some people call me a recruiter. Some people call me a headhunter. Does anybody here know what a headhunter is? Come on, you guys are gonna participate. What's a headhunter? What do you think a headhunter is? Come on, you guys can talk. What do you think? Don't whisper, I can't hear you from up here. What do you think, go ahead. We find people. Okay, here's what we do. What executive recruiters do, what headhunters do, companies all over the world, when they need a really key top employee or somebody to help run their company, help provide sales for the company, help work within their firm, and they need somebody beyond an average person, they want somebody above average, somebody exceptional, they call an executive recruiter to go out search the entire world looking for the best possible candidate for that particular job, okay? Uh, companies pay us to find top talent to help them grow their organization. It's the greatest job career in the world. Uh, how do you think we get paid? Anybody have any idea how they would pay us for that? What do you think? Commission, exactly. What do you think the commission's based on? It's based on what the candidate makes for an entire year. Whatever they earn for an entire year, we get paid a percentage of that. What percentage do you think we get? Anybody have a guess? Say it loud. 30%, he knows, he heard me yesterday when I talked about this, he was there listening when we rehearsed this. We get 30% of the candidate's first year's compensation. Okay, so that's what I do for a living. I've been doing this for over 25 years. I work with companies all over the world and I then started and took my company and grew it. We now have uh, I think 42 offices around the world. We franchised our company. So basically, I, I kind of talk about that a little bit to give you a little bit of credibility. When it comes to careers and jobs, does that give me credibility to talk to you about what you should be doing for a job? Does anybody here hope that maybe someday you might be one of those people that get placed into a job because I call you that gets you more money, moves you to the place you wanna be, gets you a promotion, and I get a giant fee for it. Okay, you all wanna be that person. Okay, when you get that phone call saying, how would you like to get more money, better job, bigger promotion, all those kinds of things, that's what we do. So when it comes to careers, we're the experts at it. We do it every single day, I've been doing it for years, I've placed hundreds of people, thousands of people, and that's why I'm standing here, hopefully with credibility. Does everybody agree that I have credibility with this? All right, so you're gonna listen. Okay, you're gonna pay attention this is important. So why am I here with you? Well, as I said, I've been doing this for a really, really long time. Uh, I've run my own company now for over 10 years. And about five or six years ago, if you recall, what was going on in the US economy? What was happening here? What was the economy like six, seven years ago? It was terrible. A recession, some people even called it a depression. What was the unemployment rate? 12%. Thousands of people were out of work. The economy was falling apart. So I decided to do a little bit of volunteer work and I was gonna go in and try to help unemployed people find a job, basically local in my community. So when I walked in, I was expecting that there were gonna be people that were unemployed that needed a job. And when I did, there were people there that needed a job. They had no idea what to do. They'd, some of them had been out of work for a couple of years. Anybody ever know anybody that's been out of work for a period of time? They just didn't know what to do. But in that room, when I was doing that presentation, there were other people there as well. There were people there who actually had jobs, who didn't like their job, wanted a different job, wanted to maybe afraid they were gonna lose their job. So I had people there that actually had jobs that came in and said, I want something different than what I'm doing and I need help, I don't know what to do. I also had people there that wanted to start their own business, had no idea where to even begin. Anybody here think they may wanna someday start their own business? Why do you think people wanna be in their own business? Freedom, how about because they don't like people telling them what to do, all right? Keep in mind, when you go to work, you're gonna have people telling you what to do every day. So that's why a lot of people like to get into their own business. It also provides a lot of freedom. 
But then also there was another group of people there, students, high school kids, college, kids with master's degrees, MBAs coming out of some of the top schools that were not trained and had no idea how to get a job. So they're all sitting in the room and what I decided to do is to start teaching every one of them to start thinking and doing what I do for a living. To teach people to think like an executive recruiter, like a headhunter, so that you can manage your own career proactively versus reactively. So a couple things to kind of think about. When I was younger, when I was your age, we were told to do one simple thing. All we had to do was graduate high school, go to college, get a degree. We didn't care what the degree was in. It was get a job, get a degree, come out, get a, get a job, and behave yourself, don't do anything stupid, and everything will be fine. That was our career plan, all right? That was what we were told to do. In those days, the companies controlled our career, all right? But what has happened, that's completely changed. There was a, a recession back in 1988 when companies started letting go their uh, major, uh, major corporations were letting people go. They called it downsizing, right-sizing, re-engineering. People would work for major companies like IBM and AT&T who'd been there 25 years were all of a sudden told you're not needed anymore. So what that did is that changed the way our economy looked at careers. Today, the average college graduate today is gonna have 14, 15 to 18 jobs. Think about that, 15 to 18 jobs. And when you think about the unknown, do you realize how many hours do you think you're gonna work in a job assuming when you graduate from college and you can retire by the time you're about 65 to 70 years old. How many hours do you think you're gonna have to work? 80,000. Think about it, 80,000 hours, okay? And today, if you were to do a poll, almost 70% of people today go to work every day doing something they don't like. Does anybody here know somebody who gets up every day and can't stand what they're doing? We don't want that to happen to you. So the key is you have to start taking a little bit more of a proactive approach to it. You've got to start thinking about what you want to do today, not after you go to college, pick a degree, get a major, graduate, then start thinking about what you want to do. You've got to do that, have that conversation today. You've got to start thinking about it. You don't want to go into the unknown not knowing what you want to do and hope it all works out in the best. Hope is not a strategy. The other thing today is things are starting to change. When you look at the traditional job where you go to work every day, nine to five, that's changing. People today are now going in and doing, have you heard of what they call the gig economy? Where people are doing multiple jobs, they're going in, they're doing projects, they work for a couple of years one place, go do something different. By the year 2020, they say that less than 50% of the people are gonna be in a traditional nine to five job. So you have to start thinking about that and you're gonna have to be the one in control of that. So the key to the whole thing, all right, the, the key that you have to look at when you start thinking about what you wanna do with your life is what do you love to do? What is your passion? It sounds like a very general type of thing, but you really have to start thinking about it. When was the last time you did something where everyone around you thought this was work and you thought it was fun? All right, you really need to start thinking about that and then building um, choosing a college, choosing a career, so that every day, nirvana, happiness, is when you get up every day and you do something all day long and you love what you're doing and you happen to get paid for it. I'm sure some of you know people who just love what they do and it seems like they're the happiest people in the world. That's a minority, we need to change, yes, we need to change that. So the key is to figure out what you love to do and build your career around that, okay? Does that make sense? Now, I can't tell you everything about career management today. Uh, for those of you that wanna talk to me later, reach out, get my business card. We have a whole program that we can give you a lot more information. But let me give you an analogy. This is what I think is gonna help you clearly kinda understand what you ultimately wanna do. If you get out of Seoul and head north, what are you gonna run into eventually? Lake Erie, okay? Now, Lake Erie is a long, narrow, shallow lake all the way at the western end of the lake is Toledo, Ohio, Detroit. What's at the other end of the lake? The eastern end, if you go all the way to the eastern end. Buffalo, okay, anybody here ever been to Buffalo? Okay, let's pretend it's the greatest place in the world. Let's pretend, okay? So in Buffalo, New York is everything you've ever wanted in life. You're making the kind of money you wanna make, you're living in the kind of home you wanna live, your personal life is perfect, and every day you get up and you do something you love to do. 
Okay, so think about that. Now, has anybody here ever been on a sailboat? Okay, picture you're in a sailboat right dead center of Lake Erie, probably right about off the, of where Cleveland is. And you're sitting in a sailboat, there's no motor on it, it's an old traditional sailboat. All you have to do to get perfect happiness is get that sailboat to Buffalo, New York. Sound easy? What if there are 30 mile an hour winds and 10 foot waves coming directly out of these? Can you still get that sailboat to Buffalo? Can you? Yes, you were here yesterday. The answer is yes, you can get there. All right, but it's gonna be really, really difficult. The wind is gonna be pushing you back. The waves are gonna be crashing on top of the boat. This is a point of sail that sailors absolutely hate to do. All right, sailing into the wind is terrible. We hate it. So we don't like doing it. But if you persevere, if you really try hard, if you hang on, you'll eventually get to Buffalo. But you have another option. You could just say, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna turn the boat towards Toledo, put the wind behind me, surf on top of those waves, put up the big colorful sail. Do you ever see a sailboat with the colorful sail in front? That's called a spinnaker. What's the problem with going to Toledo? Nothing changed. Your dreams are still in Buffalo. But what you just did is you went twice as far away from what you ultimately wanted to do. Unfortunately, that's what most people do when it comes to choosing a college, when it comes to choosing a career. They go where the wind takes them. All right, they don't really set a plan and figure out where they ultimately want to get to. So the, really the secret to career management going into the unknown is don't do it randomly. What you want to do is go and figure out exactly where you go to do what you ultimately want to do, work really hard and you'll ultimately get there versus go where the wind takes you. When I was in college, I chose my major based on my friend and I wanted to be in the same class. We decided to specialize in management science. Anybody know what that means? You can't say yes, because they made it up. There was no such thing as management science. We just picked it because it was a random, we had to make and pick a major. That's not how to do it. And we got lucky and I happened to fall into something I really love to do, but my goal was to help you not do that to spend time talking about what you want to do now, not after you go to college, pick a major, then start looking for a job. So a couple of tips, and then we'll wrap up. First of all, start thinking about in 10 years, close your eyes, dream a little bit, what do you ultimately want to be doing? How do you want to be spending your day? Um, do you want to be inside? Do you want to be outside? Um, uh, you want to think, I'll give you another, there was a, I was doing this program with a bunch of uh, kids in middle school, uh, 12 years old, and I asked this thing, what do you love to do? And one little kid looked at the back and he says, you know what, I love, my passion is dirt. I'm like, what do you mean dirt? He goes, I love dirt, I love being outside, I love being dirty. And so when I asked him, okay kids, what kind of career should he be thinking about if he wants to spend his whole life filthy dirty? And what did they say? Archaeology, engineering, construction, uh, landscape design. And then one kid yelled out in the back, how about demolition? Kid's face, face lit up and he thought, I can get paid to blow stuff up? Absolutely. But you have to go to the right school. You've got to study. You've got to be realistic. One of the things I have up here, you've got to be uh, realistic in what you're thinking about. If you stink in chemistry, we're not going to let you blow anything up. But you've got to be realistic. You've got to think about how much money you want to make. How many here want to make a lot of money? What's a lot? I had one kid say to me, I want to make $10 million a year. Should he be thinking about going into teaching? Not the teachers? Teachers are doing what they do because they love working with kids. It's not for, believe me, they're not doing it for the money. All right, so you gotta think about that. You maybe wanna be an entrepreneur, you maybe wanna get into sales. Um, you wanna start thinking about, do you wanna be in your own business? These are the questions that you need to talk and think about today. Talking to different people to try to find out their thoughts on this. So that when you do decide where and what you wanna do, you have a plan. A Couple other things, you gotta be specific saying I want to grow up and be happy, that's not a goal. You can't do that. You've got to be much more specific than that. You've got to be thinking about, I have a kid I'm working with at uh, Kent State. He wants to, he's studying accounting. He wants to work in a bank and he wants to be in Cleveland, Ohio. That's going to make it much easier for us to target how to help him get into that job so that he winds up working in the company he wants, doing what he wants, where he wants to. One of the other key things is, again, being re realistic. Um, Sometimes almost is good enough. Buffalo seems great and it might be 100% of what you want, but if you get 90%, that may be okay. You need to think about that a little bit. You can change, don't ever give up. 
uh, the point that when you get to a certain place, you may realize that it's not exactly what you want. You can change and keep going. A couple other things to think about. Strategy first. Goal strategy first. Don't head off randomly and hope things work out. As I said before, hope isn't a strategy. I want you to turn this program around where you start thinking about not where and who is going to hire you, but who's going to be lucky enough to have you come and help them grow and build their business. Location is also something that not a lot of people think about, but location is very, very important. If you're going to have to have 14 to 18 jobs, you need a network. And a network, as you were kind of learning here today, it's not about internet, it's not about social media, it's about making face-to-face -face connections. And you need to be able to have a very vibrant network if you're going to have 18 different jo jobs. If you move all over the country, then the reality is it's going to become that much more difficult. I was just talking to one of the young girls here whose brother goes to Vanderbilt University. Vanderbilt is a great, great college. My older daughter actually went there. Uh, the problem is if you come back to Cleveland, how big is the alumni network of Vanderbilt in Cleveland, Ohio? It's phenomenal in Nashville. Vanderbilt means a lot in the South. It doesn't mean that much in Cleveland, Ohio. Case does. Notre Dame does. Even the University of Michigan, though we hate Michigan, it's still Cleveland, it's pretty good. You gotta think about where you go and where you ultimately wanna be. And again, being social is not, social media is not networking. Networking is identifying people that do what you want to potentially do, going out, talking to them, and getting them to give you information, to shadow with them, to maybe potentially intern with them. But again, asking those questions now. Uh, thinking about, do you want to get into sales? How many people here think they want to be in sales? Every one of you should be raising your hand. If you can't sell yourself, your ideas, your concepts, you're not going to be successful. You've got to learn how to sell everything. Every day you've got to learn to sell thoughts, ideas, concepts. Thinking about potentially being in your own business, everyone technically, if you're going to have 18 jobs, you're kind of in the, the CEO of your own business. Networking, college, alumni, family, friends, that's really important and that's going to be the key to success. And then obviously always be building your network. And uh, as we're wrapping up, as I mentioned, I can't give you all of this information in 10 minutes, but I can at least give you some general ideas, understanding and being able to answer the question specifically, where's your Buffalo, what's your destination, what does it look like? That's going to give you ideas on how to choose what you study here in high school what colleges you want to go to, being able to define that. If you go to myhuntpath.com and use the, the code ONTOM, there is a ton of information there, article on where's your Buffalo, business plan for life, totally free, but it's the entire program that you can use to manage your career and move from being a reactive job seeker to a proactive job hunter. Okay, all right, thank you.